I'll be talking about the large optics fabrication facility for future segmented mirror telescope. When I say large optics, it is optics for the larger telescope. Uh, larger telescope, when I say that aperture from anything beyond 8 meter, 8 meter to 30 meter or 40 meter. So uh, when you say beyond 8 meter, which is not going to be a monolithic telescope, it's going to be a segmented telescope. That's why the title is put like this. Large optics fabrication facility for future segmented mirror telescope because we have a facility for making large optics for segmented mirror telescopes. Uh, my name is Shri Ram. I'm basically an optical engineer. I'm not an astronomer. Uh, this is our team actually, Elikan Bashir, Pramod uh, Panchal, Dr. Chet, Abiral, Hansen, Ajin, and the whole IPCC team is basically working on this. Thank you. Okay, let me start with that. Indian astronomical community come up with a proposal that to have a large optical telescope in Indian soil. We don't have a large telescope. The largest telescope what we have in Indian soil is 3.6 meter. So <clears throat> there's a lot of proposals. The proposals are basically to have either an observatory class telescope or a spectroscopic survey telescope or both. It depends on the financial situation. Whether it is the observatory class or a, you know the spectroscopic survey class telescope, the primary mirror is going to be a segmented primary mirror. That's why I call it a segmented mirror telescope. India is currently contributing to TMT through the TMT project through various uh, in-kind contribution, which was presented by uh, Ramya in the first talk. And among that, the major contributions are the fabrication of mirror segments and the support system, segment support assembly. They are going to be produced in the large quantity from our facility. India, India TMT Coordination Center, ITCC, has set up a large optics fabrication facility at the extended campus of IEA Vasukota. It's about 40 kilometers from here. The large fraction of uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, this people visited the facility two days back. The facility will be used for producing TMT mirror, uh, primary mirror segment initially, and it's going to happen for the next four years. Once that production is completed, we will be ready for producing uh, you know, the segments for future telescopes. And the facility will start its operation by 2023. That means the second half of 2023 are going to start the production. Okay, coming to the telescope, the future telescope, we have made several designs for observatory class as well as the spectroscopy survey telescope. This is the observatory class telescope. Why we did the design? Basically to understand that what kind of primary mirror we are going to have, whether the primary mirror can be fabricated in our facility. For that purpose, we just made a design. It's just a preliminary design, which is kind of meeting all the science requirements. There are requirements put like, you know, we need certain field of view and the image quality is so and so forth and, you know, wavelength coverage and all kinds of things. And based on that, we designed, this is a typical RC type telescope, a rich criterion telescope with a primary mirror 1.75 F ratio. It's a pre preliminary design only. We have to do a detailed design. And the second design, what we have here is the spectroscopy survey telescope. You can see that you can do surveys. You can cover the aperture is roughly 10 meter, and the uh, the all the survey which happens with the prime focus. You have a correct set of lenses which is put there, which corrects the field of view of about five square degree. You can easily have somewhere between three to four degree. We can have, but this is designed for five square degree field of view. Another uh, telescope design we have, which is again a spectroscopic survey, which we can do it in the quasi grain focus. So where we have put the correctors. This also can uh, give a field of view somewhere between, you know, three to four degree or three to five degree, five square degree field of view you can get actually. Right. So these designs are basically for getting an idea that what kind of primary mirror we have to have, whether the primary mirror and what are the various impacts which is going to affect the fabrication of the primary mirrors. To understand that, we did that. In general, in a segmented mirror telescope, the primary mirror is composed of hexagonal segments. The right hand side, what you are seeing here is a 30 meter aperture. In the 30 meter aperture, there are 492 segments are there. 
each segment size is about 1.4 meter hexagon. Those segments are put into six identical sector. Each one is sector actually. Within a sector, there are 82 segments. Those 82 segments are uh, unique, unique in terms of prescription. Within a sector, each segment is unique in terms of prescription and its dimension and shape. And sector to sector, the segments are repeating. When you come to this uh, 10 meter class telescope, there are 60 segments. They are put into four rings. Per sector, it's about 10 segments, it becomes totally 60 segments. These 10 segments are unique in terms of prescription. There's, there's no repetition actually. But segment, uh, sector to sector, there are repetitions. But in terms of fabrication point of view, what is very, very important for an optical engineer is that the center segment, if you see, it is axial symmetric. It is axial symmetric segment, which can be easily fabricated. When you go away from center, they are not axial symmetric. They are not, there is no, you know, rotational symmetricity, you see. When the segment is not having a rotational symmetric profile, it is difficult to fabricate. So the difficulty starts from their action. So the difficulty is that when you go from center to edge, the, it's, it's called an off-axis segments. The segment profile is not going to be rotation, non-rotational symmetric. It is very difficult to fabricate in a conventional technique. For example, if you see the, when you go from center to the edge, the aspericity increases. What is meant by aspericity? The surface profile, which is deviating from spherical profile, which is called aspericity. So the aspericity increases when you go from center to the edge. Is the this is the plot for 30 meter telescope? When you go from middle to a distance of 15 meter radially, if you go, the aspericity increases. When the aspericity increases, we have to remove a huge amount of material actually. So this is the next plot which shows the material removed, huge amount of material to be removed. And if you have to remove a huge amount of material, you have to spend a lot of time, which is later to time. So if it is going to take a lot of time, we cannot produce the mirror in a given time. So for example, if you want to produce 492 mirrors in four years, it's very difficult. You have to have one mirror per day. So that kind of production rate you have to have. So that's a bit of difficult actually. So difficulty comes from there now. So they, this is a general thing, the difference between spherical and aspherical. So the spherical profile looks like this, which has a you know, rotational symmetricity. About the center axis, it has a rotational symmetry. So these kind of mirrors can be easily polished or easily can be fabricated either by small tool or full tool polishing, which we can do. But if the profile comes like this, these are off axis profile. If the profile comes this, there is no symmetricity here. It is very difficult to fabricate. So we need a special technique for making such kind of profiles. As I said in the previous slide, the aspericity depends on the uh, how we are designing the primary mirror. So the design is very, very important. A lot of limitations come into fabrications when they, you know, are making the mirrors. So the lot of limitations uh, come into this, you know, the surface itself. The thing is that this is the NLOT, the National Large Optical Telescope, 10 meter plus telescope, basically. And uh, the uh, when you are, uh, if you want to make a mirror in an easy way, what we have to control is the parameter called aspericity. This aspiracy should be aspiracy should be somewhere between 100 micron to 200 micron. Suppose if you are getting aspiracy from 100 micron to 200 micron, it's easy to fabricate. If it goes beyond 200 micron, the complexity comes into picture. Actually, it is very difficult to make such kind of mirrors. So, which parameter which drives this particular number, that aspiracy, which is the second one, which is called conic constant. So, when you are designing the primary mirror, we should take care of this particular number. If this comes from design. So if this number is kept as small as possible, which is going to reduce this number, you can see here, if I have a fast primary mirror, which is having a conic constant of this, then aspericity is something like 501 micron, which is very difficult to fabricate. 501 micron material to be removed in a given place. It's very difficult. So the design gives is kind of that you have to keep that F ratio somewhere between 1.5 to 1.75 then you will get aspericity control somewhere between 100 micron to 154 micron. So those kind of mirrors can be easily fabricated. But if you see the TMT, the F ratio is your phone. It's a very fast primary mirror. 
Pony constant is thus, and the maximum aspericity is 238 micron. 238 micron removal is very difficult. This is a job we are doing actually. We are doing a difficult job actually in our facility to produce such kind of segment. All right. So, <clears throat> polishing methods. Suppose if we have a spherical surface, if it is a spherical surface to be produced, something like this, you can have a simple conventional spherical grind and polishing technique we can use either by a small tool or a full tool, a large side tool, which can easily produce this. When you go for a full tool, it's going to remove material very fast because a large contact area between the tool and the glass, it's going to remove a large amount of material in a shorter time. So that means the material removal is very faster. I'll give some numbers later. If it is an axial symmetric aspherical surface, something like this, this cannot be produced by a large tool. We have to go for a small tool and the conventional technique is not going to be useful here. We have to have a CNC machine. So if you have a CNC machine, then we can make a direct aspherical surface with a small tool and the slow, but small tool when you are using it is material removal rate is going to be very, very small. If you want to meet such kind of fast removal, then you have to have multiple CNC machines. So you have to have multiple CNC machines, then only we can meet this kind of requirement. Suppose if it is a non-rotational symmetric aspherical surface, it's all complexity comes from here, non-rotational, symmetric and aspherical surface. It's not spherical surface. Direct, directly putting aspherical surface on the glass surface, which is very difficult. Even if you have CNC machine, a lot of problems, a lot of issues you face. Of course, you can use only small tool with a CNC machine. Again, is a slow material removal. For the small, you know, this segmented mirror telescope, the material removal rate or the, the, the amount of material to be removed from the surface is typically this number, which is 1,200 cubic centimeter material to be removed from the surface. It's not a small number, it's a huge number. All right, it's, it's corresponds to something like, you know, 700 micron material we have to remove, the thickness of 700 micron material from both surfaces, the top surface and bottom surface. That amounts to this number. How do we remove this? So we need to have a special technique. What is symmetric about the third one? There's nothing symmetric about the third one. There's nothing symmetric. There is nothing symmetric. It's not, no, I'm saying non-rotational, sorry, asymmetric. Non, so non-rotational is a, is a type of error. So non-rotational asymmetric aspherical profile. There is no symmetricity here, no. Yes, that's a mistake. All right, so what astronomers want first? Finally, from the telescope. They are looking for a sharp PSO. PSO should be almost close to the theoretical limit. This is what astronomers expect. The second thing, what they expect is we don't want any background. The background should be almost close to zero. We don't want anything there, actually. And the PSF can be nicely fit by either Gaussian or you know, Moffat or uh, standard fittings, right? We don't want to lose any flux. That means the astronomers are looking for the PSF which is very tight and it should be a, almost like a theoretical PSF you are fit for. There was a question during uh, you know, Ramya's presentation. So the large aperture having an advantage that it can push you at depth. Sensitivity, which is because the large amount of photons we are collecting, actually the sensitivity is going to increase. So sensitivity is proportional to this eta is called Strel ratio. Strel is nothing but height of the PSO compared to the theoretical PSO. The Strel square and the aperture power four. <coughs> so theoretically, if you are able to get, if you have, if you are able to get a theoretical PSO, you will get the sensitivity. That means the depth. You will get something like this. It will push you this faint limit of morning tree presented like 30 second magnitude, such kind of things you can get, which is driven by this kind of PSR. So you have to have a sharp PSR. PSR should not be degraded by any means, but the PSR can be easily degraded by the primary mirror because the primary mirror is the major source which can easily degrade the PSR. So that means we have to pay attention on when you are making this, you know, the primary mirrors so that it is meeting our specification is not going to degrade to the PSO. So the mirror surface here is, is typically represented by a power spectral density. This is the power spectral density plot. The horizontal axis is a spatial frequency and vertical axis is an amplitude. And the power spectral density is uh, normally, you know, divided into three regions. The first one is called the high frequency region, which is a high frequency here, which we call it as a finish. And the middle one is the 
mid spatial frequency error and the, the first one is you know the high low frequency error suppose so this is a kind of you know texture you will get which corresponds to the high frequency error the texture is something like this right so this kind of texture if it is coming on the mirror surface which is going to scatter the light which is going to give a wide angle scatter when it gives a wide angle scatter you see here the theoretical psf is like this the center one is a theoretical psf which is taking away the energy from the core and spreads into these pedestals which astronomers doesn't want they don't want actually so that way so what is happening is the theoretical psf is like this if you are having such a kind of profile on the mirror surface which is going to give a wide angle scatter which is going to spread this psf which is going to lift the background that means it is going to affect snr as well as the photometry all right so it's going to a huge error actually background it is going to lift and you will not get a proper psf the second error which is sitting which can sit on this mirror surface is called the mid spatial frequency error you can see here there are circles and lines you are seeing is called tool marks the tooth which is putting a mark on the surface if that is there which is going to affect the resolution you can see the psf this is this we call it as a killer the thing is that actually if such kind of error is there on the mirror surface which is going to broaden the psf when it is broadening the psf the resolution gone so it is affecting the resolution now the low frequency error it's called aberration the lower order the smooth variation it's called a form error if it is sitting on the surface which is going to affect the sensitivity because it is going to affect the eta, eta is 12 ratio. 12 is the height difference, you can see that. Theoretical PSF is up to this and the PSF can be achieved here is slightly lower than the theoretical PSF. That means the height is less, that means the eta is less. If the eta is less, the sensitivity is going to be, it is going to affect the sensitivity as well as the faint limit which is going to affect. Another important thing which is related to high contrast imaging when you are making such kind of surface, the edges should be clean, edges should not be lifted. Normally when you are making a, you know, the optical polishing, when the tool sees the sharp edges, it will create a problem. Either the edges will go up, which we call it as the edge of stand, or edges will go down. It is called edge roll off or roll down. Such kind of error if it is sitting at the edges, what will happen actually it is going to affect the high contrast imaging, something like an exoplanet science observation. Another important thing what we have to uh, take care of during the polishing is actually, we cannot remove the material very fast from a given position for a longer time. What it is going to do actually, if you try to remove material very fast, it's a coarse aberration tool, which is going to create a micro cracks. The micro cracks are going to be danger over a period of time because when the telescope, when such kind of mirror is sitting there in telescope, it is going to see a different environment. Over a period of time, the micro cracks will develop and it can break the glass. So this is again another important thing when you are doing large optics fabrication, particularly when you are seeing this, you should take care of this. If it is a small optic with a high thickness, a conventional optic doesn't matter here, but this is very danger for thin optics. Well, mirror fabrication. So the conversion, I don't know how many of you know about this particular, this is a 2.34 meter primary mirror. This was fabricated in IAA facility in 1980s by conventional technique. This is 2.34 meter diameter and thickness is 400 millimeter. Today, what we are talking about this mirror for the segmented mirror telescope, 1.5 meter diameter, only 45 millimeter thickness, not even two inch, 45 millimeter thickness. So when you are handling such kind of optics, we should be very, very careful. Handling itself is challenge actually. So such kind of mirror fabrication, it took almost two to three years to complete one mirror. But here, what we are looking for is the production rate. What we are looking for is something like two mirrors per month. Two mirrors per month should come out of the facility. This is the production rate which you are looking for, larger telescope. Definitely we cannot use a conventional technique. We need a special technique. That technique is called stress mirror polishing technique. So stress mirror polish, since the glass blank is very thin, we can bend the glass. Since the glass is only 45 millimeter and diameter is about 1.5 meter, at the boundary, we can put the force, set of forces. Using the force, we can either bend like this, you can bend like this, or whichever way you want, you can bend actually. So stress mirror polishing technique <coughs> is otherwise called bend and polishing technique. You can bend the glass, Within elastic limit, we are not going to bend too much. The bending is about something like 300 micron. We are bending. It's not too much. Actually. It's not a millimeter bending. 
All right. In acemic technique, glass blank, which is in rounder shape, which I showed in the previous slide, which is warped to the opposite shape of the desired aspherical profile. Suppose if I want a particular aspherical profile, you bend to get the reverse of that particular profile. Under stress condition, put the tool, bring the tool, do a polishing. It's a full tool, bring the tool, do polishing. The polishing is a spherical polishing. Spherically, we are removing the material. The spherical is straightforward. It is something like conventional. Remove the material under stress condition. Once the polishing is done, remove the stress, relax the stress, and relax. releasing the warping forces will take you the glass blank to the desired, required aspherical profile. That simple it is. So that is the advantage of stress mirror polishing technique. Here we are using large tool. One important thing which I did not cover in the previous slide is actually the, I talked about the, you know, the mid spatial frequency error, high spatial frequency error and all kinds of things. Where the mid spatial frequency error can come only from small tool polishing because it's related to the tool, uh, you know, the marks, right? So, this, if the small, if the tool is very small, it's called small tool polishing, which can create with such kind of a mid spatial frequency error as well as a high spatial, high spatial frequency error. Stress mirror polishing, we are using a full tool. We are using full tool. The tool size is about almost 85 percentage of the size of the glass blank. The tool size is 1.35 meter and glass blank is 1.5 meter. So, full tool, since we are using a full tool, there's a good control on mid spatial frequency error as well as high spatial frequency error. We don't have to worry about these two errors, but we should worry only about the low frequency error. Since we are using full tool, it is going to remove a fast material removal. It's going to give a fast material removal. I'll just give some number at the end. And it gives a fast convergence. It converges very fast. We can get the aspherical profile very fast. And it is compatible for thin glass beam. Is it possible? Suppose if you are having a thicker glass, is it possible to make using stress mirror polishing? It's not possible. So we have to have a thin section of glass blank to have produced the skin down. So stress mirror polishing technology is innovate, an innovative uh, technology and it's a well-proven technology and is well suited for a large size and thin optics. SMP is otherwise called pendant polishing technology. Primary advantage of the technology is that you can directly produce aspherical surface. We don't have we don't have any we don't have to have a secondary process. We can directly put aspherical form mirror. We can put directly on the surface. That's an advantage. Whether it is on axis or off axis doesn't matter. So we can directly put bi spherical polishing. That's the biggest advantage of the stress mirror polishing technology. SMB uses a large tool which yields a polished surface free from mid and high spatial frequency error. Which is uh, very important, which is very important for high resolution image. And the large tools remove the material faster. So that means we can produce two roundels. It's a one roundel in two beats and two roundels per month. That's a production rate. This is the simple uh, physics behind this, what we are, what the SP is doing. Suppose if this is a surface, any optical surface can be brokered into or decomposed into Zernike polynomial if the surface is circular. So you see that this is a surface which can be broken into, you know, decomposed into Zernike polynomial. These are Zernike terms. You can see that all the Zernike terms are axial symmetry. You can see either it's, a, you know, this is a circular symmetric or axial symmetric. You can see that it's a one fold. If you put one axis symmetric, it's a three axis symmetric. These kind of profile can be easily produced in the SMP. These kind of profile. That means if you want to generate this profile, what do you do actually? Generate this profile, this profile, this profile, this profile, combine them, you'll get this one. That's what exactly SMP is doing. This is what exactly done set here actually. So the, I want this kind of profile. Each segment has its own prescription, right? That prescription is uh, decomposed like this. And uh, there is a, a, you know, there is a, the SMP takes an input like this. You, if you know the prescription, a particular segment prescription, if you know that prescription should be feed here, it will calculate the required force to generate this particular thing. It automatically calculates here. That force is fed into this SMP fixture, which bends the, uh, you know, uh, the, bends the glass plant. There are 24 steps. The entire process is put in uh, 24 blocks, actually. I'm not going into detail of these things. So we follow each and every steps to produce this glass blank silver facility. In a nutshell, there are major four steps only we follow for producing the segments. 
See, for example, you can see this is a draper machine. On the draper machine, the SMB fixture is sitting, something like this. There are three, you know, grind and polishing tools we are using. You can see that this is a tool, this is a grinding tool. Two grindings we do. One is called post grinding, other one is fine grinding. Post grinding, we run it for only four hours, which removes the material 50 micron per hour. Our requirement is 200 micron material we have to remove. Fine grinding is 5.5 .5 hours we run, 20 micron per hour. That's the removal material, material removal rate. Our requirement is only 100 micron material we have to remove. Now it is coming to the pad polishing, the second tool, this one. Pad polishing, we run it for 36 hours and it removes the material 1 micron per hour. Very smooth polishing. So, and the removal material removal rate, what the requirement is only 30 micron. Finally, we do a pitch polishing. This is what, this is going finally doing a figuring. Pitch polishing, which is going to control this high frequency error and uh, which is which we run it for 10 hours. So it is one to two micron material moles in this actually. So this is what we follow. This is the major four steps which you follow in this. Our facility is ready now. We have put all the equipments in our facility. These equipments, uh, what we are, this technology basically we are getting from United States, one of the company called Pokhran. From there we are getting the technology and we are getting the equipments also from them. And uh, the first set equipment already we have got, we have installed there in our facility. I mean, we have placed there in our facility. Actual commissioning is going to start soon. And second set equipment is going to come uh, next month. <clears throat> I mean, by by end of February, we are going to get second set of equipment. And May, we are planning for you know commissioning. And in April, we are going to start operating the facility. So the major activity, if you, if you see here, actually, we get a roundel. I mean, the glass line comes like this. Polish the roundel using SMB technology. Once the glass blank is polished, cut the glass blank into a hexagon and do some, put some, you know, the mechanical features at the back surface. Once this is done, you just mount it over segment support assembly and do a final metrology. This is what we do actually. And coming to the metrology tool, we have three sets of metrology tool cover the entire, uh, you know, the metrological profile to cover the entire spatial bands. Three metrology tool, one is called 2D profilometer, and second one is called sub aperture interferometer. We are getting, and then another one which is to cover the high frequency error, which is called face measuring microscope, which is going to cover the data in seven spatial bands, which is put here. This is the power spectral density, which is put in different color. You can see each one is one one spatial band, which you are getting actually. These three are the uh, you know the metrology tool. This is the 2D profilometer, which is 1.5 meter in size. And this is an interferometer, which is going to capture data from every 200 millimeter, the sub aperture interferometer. And this is the uh, face measuring microscope, which is going to capture data on the surface to a scale of 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter, that kind of spatial profile. Okay, I'm giving some number here, actually. This is the power spectral density, which we have got from one of the rounder, which we polished. And uh, the power spectral density, if you see, there are seven bands. Band seven is here, actually, the high frequency error. We are able to get 1.5 nanometer. Actually, this is the requirement. 1.5 nanometer is the requirement. We got 0.9 nanometer. The, what we have achieved is much, much better than this. And this is three nanometer. We got two nanometer. We achieved two nanometer. And the next band, the requirement is 10 nanometer. What we have got is, I think, 8.6 or something like that we got. I'll just show you the next, next slide. So that mean whatever we have achieved is well within the requirement, the specification put on the mirror surface. But what we cannot control, there is a limitation. We can, what we cannot control here is the low frequency error. That needs a secondary processing. All right. This is one of the table. Finally, when you are making the optics, we have to deliver the output in the, all the numbers we have to deliver basically. This we call it as a vendor table. We are a vendor for PMT. Because the entire thing is happening in house, we are the vendor. So we have to create this table. We put all the metrology data here by its, you know, the all those you know bands. We put the data here. Finally, it will tell you that whether the segment is pass or fail. It will come here because it it does all the calculations, you know, the IBF calculation, EO limit calculation, everything it will do, and then finally it will tell you that whether it is pass or fail. You can see that this particular rounder which we polished. Which is right away passed. So far, we have produced three roundels. All the three roundels are passed with a huge margin. And the low frequency error, some part of the look is the last line. Then the low frequency error, which cannot be controlled, we cannot control in stress mirror polishing, but some amount of the low frequency error can be controlled by 
the segment support assembly, what you see here, this is a segment support assembly where I'm pointing here, this is called the leaf spring. It's called warping harness. In the telescope, when the segment is mounted on the support structure, when, the, when it is there in the telescope, you can bend the glass. In situ bending you can do. By bending, you can correct the residual error. So warping harness system is there in this, you know, the telescope structure. I mean, the segment support assembly that can take care of the deviation of low frequency errors. If you want to get a AO limit, then you have to have a secondary process which is called iron beam figuring. That facility we don't have right now. If you have that facility, we can take this mirror specification to down to the theoretical limit, which is AO limit we can get. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, Sridhar. Thank you, Sridhar. Any questions for that? I have a question. Why is the thickness of the mirror so important? Uh, well, so the thickness should be uh, very, very small because of the, the first, first and uh, the important reason is that thermal inertia. The thing is that when the telescope is in operational, the temperature is going to change. If you have a thick glass, what will happen actually, the top surface to bottom surface will be the thermal gradient if it is not having a good thermal conductivity or the glass is very thick. So what we'll see actually, if we have done some analysis, if the thickness is more, thermal inertia is going to be more, it is going to create a delta T between the top and bottom surface, which is going to distort the optics. Thermal contribution is more. Second thing is, if the thickness is more, handling is difficult, warping is difficult because we have an in-situ warping harness, which cannot warp easily, then you have to strengthen the, you know, the warping harness, which is a bit difficult. So because of that reason, of course, the mass is also going to increase. We are increasing the thickness. Mass is also going to increase. There are several reasons for that. The primary reason is thermal inertia as well as the warping. These four things. Sure. Uh, no, can I ask one? Sure. Like, uh, when you do the stress mirror polishing, do you give each forces for each of these uh, ZMK components separately, or it's one? Well, the calculation, the behind the you know the screen, what is actually happening is. The SMB works based on the thin plate uh, bending theory. It calculates for individual prescription. Individual means if it is astigmatism, it calculates for astigmatism. Then it calculates for spherical. It calculates for coma. Then it mixed together because what is beauty of this uh, Zamnike polynomial is orthogonal. That means one component I can independently generate, another component I can independently generate, then I can add them together. That means one day is not talking to other. So it's independent. So SMB, how it works is actually, you can generate the individual component. If I want to put only power, yes, I can generate power alone. If I want to generate power and astigmatism, separately you do, and then mix them. SMB is finally mixing, but actual production is this calculating for individual component. Because it's orthogonal. Thanks, sir. Okay. Long live India and France friendship.